You ready okay. to go? I am indeed. Dude, I'm so amped. I'm so psyched you're back. Thank you, sir. You look uh, very Mexico. <laughs> You've got that like Mexico glow going. Why? What looks Mexico about me? You, your aura. It's changed. You can see it? I see a lot of white, red, and green. Oh, yeah. It, it's flowing for sure right now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to episode 82, ladies and gentlemen, of Hot the Field podcast. That's right. I have returned from Mexico specifically. He's La back. Ciudad de Mexico. Oh, the lefe for those Spanish listeners. That's like the place, man. It's the motherland. Like when I hear people say the motherland, I imagine Mexico That's City. where we all come from. Mexico City. Every one of us. Every single one. We just popped out like a factory. Just. <laughs> So before we start diving into that trip, what's been up with you, man? How's life been? I'm doing good, man. I'm getting back into just getting into the grind of everyday life. After our trip. After our little <laughs> right, our little yeah. trip, or our beautiful trip. Um, to Cleveland. It's been, you know what? It's been okay. Uh, I forget that there's a lot to do around the house uh-huh. at times, especially with the doggies running around. Also. And then womp womp news, my car, the Beamer to be specific, started acting up a bit. Mm, so, typical. Typical Beamer behavior. Typical Beamer behavior. So I beam. might have to take it into... Beam. <laughs> you did not say... Beamer. <laughs> you didn't say the other one that involves a bean. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I got to take it into the mechanics. That's a little annoying, but we'll figure it out. We'll take it step by step. And then the Civic, uh, I drove it over here today and I don't have my door panel on it. <laughs> so my entire window mechanism doesn't work right now because one little plastic ball uh-huh. fell out. And I can't put that back in because it cracked in half. Nice. So I have to order the entire piece again. We also have had a recent food horror story. And it seems like once your body finally fixed one thing, it was like, oh, we're going to hit you with another thing. Because your thumb is pretty much healed now, right? I was going to say, you just saw me smack it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing too bad anymore. I'm doing, you know, (laughs) I could thumb it now. But something else had to <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure i got food poisoning off of like a carl's jr chicken sandwich so before we tell this let us know if you've had any food nightmares have have you i yeah that's why i don't like korean barbecue i Dude, will never eat korean barbecue i here's the thing i ate it before that carl's jr chicken sandwich uh-huh. but i'm not gonna blame it because i know how to cook my own meat mm-hmm. i can cook my meat i cook delicious i will fuck up any korean barbecue spot around us mm-hmm. absolutely awesome but do not get the chicken sandwich at Carl's Jr. Do Which not, is sad dude. because I like Carl's Jr. I like it a lot. I like the burgers. They yeah. are a little greasy at times. I ain't going to lie. Now, have I only been ordering the Western Bacon Cheeseburger for 28 years? Yes. Chances are you probably have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With crisp cup fries. And occasionally when I'm feeling bad, an Oreo shake. I remember in high school, Cap would always love getting a double Western. I mean, it's the sandwich, if you ask me. The only sandwich you should be getting. Well, I love the Big Carl from Carl's Jr. Mm-hmm. That's... Oh. Then why did you get a chicken sandwich? <laughs> I, I just I got a little hamburger, and I was like, you know what? Let me get a chicken sandwich, too. I want to mix it up a bit. Clearly was the biggest mistake I've so, had in the so past week. So when did you realize this chicken sandwich might have uh, screwed me up a little bit? <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. So I go to bed. Go to bed. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. Wake up in the morning. I'm like, I got to go destroy the bathroom real quick. Mm-hmm. I go. Come back out, and I'm like, all right, I should probably start getting ready to war. <laughs> so uh, my Monday was off to a fantastic start, man. How about you? How was getting back? Uh, it was great, but I also wanted to ask, you showed me this. Your eyes, like, popping out a little bit. I wouldn't say popped out. I would say you okay, can yeah, see a like, red speck. You can see the red speck. Like, oh, oh I do see that. I didn't notice that when you showed me the first time. Yeah, so I, I got that. That's a new uh, new decal unlocked. Cool. So it should be uh, interesting, but I mean, I'll be normal about it. Hey, what do you week. think? You want to get Carl's Jr. after this? Oh, I can go for a couple chicken sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> These sound delicious. No, but while I was gone in Mexico, the sports world moves on, of course, and the Little League World Series crowned its winner, Florida Lake. I, I'm sorry. I, Against Taipei, I believe. The right. name is missing me. It's Lake something that won the whole thing. But how they won. I'm sure you saw the video. I saw every sports account posting it. I saw a video too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It was truly a Little League like, walk-off. Yeah. yeah. They had a guy on second, I believe. Okay. They bunted it down. And typically, when you bunt, the corners crash. And second is supposed to cover first. And short covers third if needed. Well, second didn't cover first, and I believe the pitcher was the one who picked it up, yeah. or first. It was one of those. He just turns he, around, fires, just expecting somebody to be there. Nobody's there. 
And I felt so bad, bro. The horror of him realizing there's nobody there oh when he's God. full extension and you like see the ball leave is yep. oh, yeah. And that throw brought in the winning run. Boy, my goodness. <laughs> Did you see the catcher when the throw came in? It came in late, obviously. But he cat he it flies over his head because he's just like he's so like <laughs> depressed that that just happened. Oh, poor guy. And the reign of terror of Aaron Judge keeps going. He's not going to stop anytime soon, is 51 he? 51 home runs. And we're not even finished with August. What is there, like a month and a couple change? Yeah, a for, month and some change. Baseball left? Yeah. So he's going to go off, I think. And they're currently playing the Nationals right now. <laughs> oh, so they're. I wonder what their schedule's like. If they're going to be on a tear for the remainder of the year. I don't know, but my goodness. He could break his own single season record. Which he did like two years ago. Yeah. So that was 62. And he's currently, might have changed after today, but currently on pace for 63 home runs. Really? Yeah. Wow. At least that's what stats and robot numbers will tell you. Sheesh. And he has like 122 RBIs. He's having an insane season. And if it weren't for Bobby Witt Jr., he'd be (laughs) triple crown right now. Which what, is possible. What's Bobby Witt have on him? Last I checked, it was Judge sitting at like 333 and Bobby Witt at 347. Can't count it, on Bobby Witt, man. quite a margin, but say Bobby Witt slumps the entire month of September and Judge just keeps rolling. It could happen. It'll be his. Yeah, Stephen Kwan took a deep nosedive on his average. I was about to say, when we were in Cleveland, he was batting, I think, 330-something. Yeah, he at one point was batting like 350. Yeah, and I remember. I, the, I think when we were there, it was three thirty-three. He was batting, and I checked to look at the Judge Triple Crown watch, and I didn't see Quan in the top five. And I was like, "Where did Quan go?" Because oh, wow. he was tearing it up all season with his average. He's barely batting over three hundred now. He's batting like three oh four, which is still good, still amazing, good by any means. But like that shows you how much your average can dive if you just hit a slump to go from three fifty to three oh four. So. Watch out. We might have a triple crown winner in Aaron Judge. Dude, baseball is going to be crazy in the next couple months. Yeah, I'm very excited for this final month. Did you see what uh, Shohei did as well? Yeah, 40-40 club, which is only like him, Sosa, McGuire, Bonds. Oh, legendary status, adding to the resume. And, of course, I looked up, has there ever been a 50-50 season? Mm -hmm. Never. So, of course, the first year with the Dodgers, yeah. he might be the first ever 50-50 player. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This freaking guy. Well, hey, to be honest, though, if it's going to be anybody, I'm glad to show him. I still will root for him personally. Yeah, that's okay. I, I will say his last, root for him his his last two home runs, stupid as hell, just in the fact that they got out. Like, especially the most recent one. He reached for that almost fell like to the ground and hit it out what i saw the home run i was like what bullshit is that <laughs> but that's what happens when you're shohei freaking otani when you show you can do anything and oh my god the one that got him the 40 40 club oh the, yeah i the, saw that the guy that dropped it oh i'd be not, kicking myself i would not want to be that guy dude he had it set up he even used two hands <laughs> Although, I think, I can't confirm, I think on the clip, the guy next to him also had a glove. He did, for sure. But I think he bumped him. For sure. I mean, especially on a home run that legendary where everyone's waiting for it into the walk-up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it a Grand Slam walk-up? Yeah. Dude. So, everybody's fighting for that ball. Especially... No, it was pretty calm because it was the home run seats. So, everyone was just looking at it and they're just... It was the home run seats at Dodger Stadium, which are very expensive and don't have a lot of people. Yeah, it's the section that's like... It's only two rows of people. And... It was just like the main guy that dropped it and then the guy who I believe bumped him fighting for it. There was really nobody else fighting for it. But I'd be so mad. Can you imagine if that was his friend? Oh, oh. my God, I, dude. <laughs> Awkward car ride home. I'd want to punch him. <laughs> I would not want to be in that car ride. No, not at all. But now I will yap. I will have a yapathon because go ahead and yap. Well, tell tell me everything from the bits of starting the journey to coming back. How was Mexico? Well, it didn't start off so well because I woke up sick. Oh yeah, great. Well, how sick on a one at a time? It evolved throughout the whole trip, but a number. I mean, start off like a. Three? I haven't even felt terrible. It's just been annoying. Like 
I woke up that day with just like a scratchy throat, and that was it. And then we got on our plane and we flew Aero Mexico, which is like bougie apparently. Yeah. There's like only three airlines that you can fly in Mexico. It's Aero Mexico, Volaris, and uh, is oh, Viva the other one? Viva, maybe I think so. I forget. Or Viva Aerobus, Aerobus, A- Aerobus. That's Aerobus. the last one. Okay, so I've heard Aerobus is like trash. <laughs> so a little, a little Easter egg. While I worked at John Wayne, yeah, my company was actually rumored to get Idol Mexico's contract in. Oh, that so would be nice. Then they, I wouldn't have to drive all the way to Tijuana, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it didn't come to fruition. So Damn. womp womp, we would have had another international leg of like coming out of Orange County directly, which would have been cool. Damn. I would have loved to work it. They even yeah. told me too. They're like, "Would you be interested?" And I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" You'd probably be one of the first choices because you can speak Spanish. Yeah. So since you're bilingual, the only choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean that would have been cool. But I don't Mexico. Yeah, it is. At least when I last left off with it, it was the bougier airline to go well, into Mexico. Well, Art and I flew the second time. This was year three for me. The second time we flew Volaris. And, dude, the, I swear those planes are from the 80s. Yeah, 80s, like, with, the, with the seats, right? It, yeah, the seats are, like, <laughs> like straight, bright, out of, straight out of a bus. Bright neon, yeah, bright neon colors. They have the zigzaggy lines. The, like, 80s just look to them. And no TV, can't recline your seat. <laughs> oh, no reclining of the seats? Yeah. That's dirty. So I get on uh, Aero Mexico, and I was like, oh, TV, <laughs> can't recline the seat. And this is the first plane i've ever seen that you can do this you can bluetooth your headphones they oh, have that yes no because i was saying i was like ah look you guys forget some plug-in headphones ha 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 and then arcos there's bluetooth and i'm like no there's not <laughs> and i'm like bullshit i'm like flights don't have that guys you have no idea like i've met so many people in my life that have that same first world problem of not being able to connect their airpods yeah and having to use a free wired pair of headphones yeah this is, we just saved first world problems. No, they really, I mean, I still used my plug-in headphones because I brought them. Dude, no, every, everybody that I know, even on the plane that I took to Cleveland, yeah, people were complaining like, I can't believe there's no way. Like, well, just, I, okay, but. I'm just like, like, I, I don't complain because I'm thinking ahead. Like, I already know, like, I've been flying for the past, ever since we went to New York. That's when I started, like, going on trips all the time. You've never been able to pair a headphone, so I... Yeah, no, I, I still haven't. Yeah. I've never done that, so that's and, cool. And so I'm just like, okay, fine, I'll just remember to plug in headphones, and I'm not going to complain. <laughs> like, and so when we got on there, I'm like, no way. And so, yeah, I did. you just hit Bluetooth, and then it knows like your headphones are right in front of it. Dude, that's so close. And it, yeah, it was wild. And then um, flew there. It's about a three-hour flight. We landed at like 6 a.m. probably. Oh, so you took a red eye. Yeah. And I will say this. Chartreuse was supposed to go with us on this trip. Mm -hmm. And originally, this did not click in my head or Art maybe said it like once or twice and I just didn't put it together. The trip dates were the 22nd through the 25th. So he texted me the night before. He's like, okay, here's the plan, blah, blah, blah. And this was Tuesday. He's like, we'll meet here tomorrow. And I was like, you mean Thursday, the 22nd? And he's like, no, tomorrow our flight flies into the 22nd. And I was like, I didn't make any plans or anything, so I was fine. But I was like, what? And Chartreuse backed out because she made plans on the 21st, which is technically the day we're leaving. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, now I kind of get why she backed out. It didn't click to me either that it was the 21st flying into the 22nd. And, yeah, that's why she backed out. Damn. And I kind of get it now. At first, I was like, why would you make plans on the day we fly? Like, I'm thinking it's the 22nd. I'm like, we've been saying 22nd through 25th. Especially if the itinerary just says the 22nd to the 25th. Yeah, And exactly. they don't specify, like, the flight Like, I'm sure Art said it, like, once or twice, but I just probably didn't click. And I just kept seeing 22nd through 25th, 22nd through 25th on like text and verbal talking about it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I would (laughs) have. Yeah, if I made plans on the 21st, I would have been fucked. (laughs) But we made it. We landed very early. And then I believe the first thing we did, yeah, the first thing we did was go to breakfast at the skyscraper in the middle of like Mexico City. 
I think I did the see downtown that on, your, on your story. Yeah, I, there's a famous statue there. I can't remember what it's called. It's the angel holding something up. I forget what it's called. It's like a huge roundabout. Okay. But it's very famous. And we had great pastries. I had like a croissant with like lemon icing on top and a filling. That was really good. Nice. And then I also had like this other one that was strawberry filling and it was like a cube pastry. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. Oh, um, cube gelatinous. No, not gelatinous. Sure. It was like Ooh. croissant, but in a cube. <laughs> croissant in a cube. Okay. Yeah. And so that was really good and fantastic egg and bacon sandwich, which really hit because, like I said, I wasn't feeling the greatest. Art actually started off this trip not feeling good at all. Really? Like, I don't remember what did it, but he did not feel good. He That whole first day, he was like pale. Like I remember he came back to the table from using the bathroom. He had like chapped lips. I was like, dude is going through it like we all are (laughs) that overnight flight killed us and then we leave that we knock out for as much time as we can before we went back to Zotramico which is home of the last remains of the Mayan Aztec River it's one of them and you get to take those for an hour or two we did two hours party your ass off and you, anything is available to you on those boats. Even, say, I'm so jealous of you guys getting all that, like, groserias and shit. With, like, the chicharron. I'm saying it to corn. you. And I said it to them on the trip. The one person who has not come with us on this trip, if you've done for three years, that needs to come because he would thrive and he would just fit in so naturally to everything, is you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's your kind I, of trip. It really is. I'd love it. I know I would. Next year. I'd love to go with, like, Mama. I think that'd be a good Bring her. Our brought his dad year one. My mom wants to go now. <laughs> so I'll just tell her, bring your dad again. Mama <laughs> Mobo and Mama Kleshka take Mexico? And, and Papa Garcia. Papa Garcia. <laughs> what if we throw a Papa Cap? We could. I'd, lo- I'd love uh, to go to Mexico City with Papa Cap. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, we get on the boat, and I was going to bring this little speaker, but I forgot it at the house. So I was like, damn, we can't blast our music. So there's a guy who steers the boat and gets us going. And he's like, oh, just one moment. And he, there's all these houses on the side of the river. And this little kid comes out of his house to the riverfront and just hands him a giant speaker. <laughs> and he's just like, here you go. And we're like, the hell? And then we bought our beer off a beer boat that was just <laughs> going by. Hell yeah. Bucket of Coronas. And then Una we got esquites and elote from another boat. <laughs> it's just, here you go. We're like, dude, I love this. For the viewers that are a little confused, it's legit a river. Like, I, I, I it's like you were to put a river in the middle of your city. Like, yeah. Like, you just, the you're on the boat. Stuff comes up to you. Stuff goes away from you. Yep. But, I mean, it's all good fun. It's all love, too. And you can stop and get off. There's, like, houses that are, like, exhibits or things to look at. One of them was Dead Doll Island. Dead Doll Island. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dolls like hanging from trees, and some look mutilated. Not creepy. Some at all. look brand new. <laughs> like, we also got to see axolotls in real life. I was about to say that you guys go stupid for them in Minecraft. They're so cool, dude. In real life and Minecraft. So okay, what's better, the Minecraft version or the real life? A uh, real axolotl. <laughs> if I could have a pet axolotl, I'd have one in here easily. Just throw one. They are not very common. They're going <laughs> extinct. <laughs> and that river is like the home of axolotls. That's like where they come from. And there's a spot where you can stop and get off the boat. And they have like whatever they can find of axolotls. So we saw like pink ones, white ones, yellow ones. And if I had to guess, I have no idea if this is true. I think when they become full adult, they're just black. I think all of them. Yeah. Because all the big ones they had were black, every single one. But then all like the smaller ones were like white, pink, yellow. Interesting. I didn't even know that. I don't know if that's true, but that's just from observation. <laughs> so that's my guess. And we partied that night, had a ton of fun, went back, partied at the house, kept it going, <laughs> knocked out. And we had to get up very early. How early? 
4 a.m. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. You're I, not even on the clock, brother. No, I was not excited about that, but I knew I'd have to do it because we were going on hot air balloons. I was about to say, the payoff must have been sick. A hot air balloon? Yeah, over the sun and moon pyramids oh. in Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. And I've done that before. I did it walking with Art last year and his family, and this time we took hot air balloons with our whole group. My goodness, I was feeling horrible that morning oh. that was the worst morning were you I, just like motion sickness uh, or you... i was sitting no on the air balloon like whenever we did our events i was able to suck it up and be fine but like the waiting and the prepping like all that stuff i felt so horrible i was sick and then i was like okay let me eat and see if that helps and when i ate i was like i feel like the more i eat the more i feel disgusting Oh, so I grabbed like a concha. Yeah. I had like two bites and I was like, I no. And they gave us coffee too. I was like, no. And just none of it. I didn't feel like anything was appetizing. Like nothing seemed like I wanted it. And I tried to force myself to throw up and only like a little bit <laughs> was able to come out. So I was like, okay, that didn't help. And then we got on the hot air, hot air balloons, very cramped. You can fit about like I was about to ask you that how many people five were people per section so there's four sections oh shit so yeah so if it was for example let's say you me Papa Cap and Shortsy I would spread us out me and you are already big bodies so that be you and me alone is one section no you could fit all of us but I'd just spread us out just okay to make more sense okay <laughs> like, okay I thought it was like oh, okay like if you're three big people no that, one i don't think that matters but i would spread it out evenly Damn, okay. and they have like hot plates so if you're under the hot plate you don't feel any of the heat when they're like <laughs> blowing the fire and everything and so i was not under the hot plate and i could feel it like the heat like and it wasn't unbearable it actually felt nice it actually made me feel better and art was under the hot plate and he's like i don't feel anything <laughs> i'm like are you serious <laughs> He's like, yeah, whatever this is, is like preventing the heat. And I was like, sick. Right on. I was like, I like it. I'm fine with it. And we did that. Got a beautiful view of the pyramids. Take a pic of it on your phone? I took pics, videos, everything. Oh. A ton. And Where can the viewers find that? As always, on Austin Kleschka's YouTube channel. That's me. So Th That's you? That is me. I thought you were a different Austin Clutch No, no. I'm, From Off the Field I'm Podcast. Sure. I'm also that one. Because I know they upload on Spotify and, and Apple and YouTube. Yeah. Well, it's 7 a.m., right? 7 a.m. to start your day. You I can have us inside your ears. We'll be inside of you at 7 a.m. <laughs> yes. So you do that. You get the epic view. And you end with a glass of champagne. <laughs> they, what? Yeah. Damn so fancy as bitch. Okay. They're supposed to land you in the grass but they just landed our basket straight in the truck <laughs> i'm not <laughs> Dude, even that's kidding. sick it wasn't perfect they didn't hit it oh was try. it like a it was a little slanted so they had to push it so i was like <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay we're not gonna go on the grass we're just gonna aim for the bed of the truck and it was like a trailer like those fat flatbed trailers that are just wood and so we just landed in one of those and then you hop out we got our champagne and it was cool. I really was debating on drinking it because, like I said, I wasn't feeling that good. I was like, alcohol? Eh. Paltos, mijo, paltos. You drink that. I did. Yeah. I was like, for the experience, I'll drink it. But I was like, <laughs> I'm not having anything else. So drank it, went back home. This all finished around like 9 a.m. And I knocked out. I said, until our next event, I am sleeping. I am not doing anything. So I did. And then we had Lucha. <laughs> And I love Lucha. We did it once before, and we ran it back, and I got myself a mask. It's now oh, my second one. No way. Look and, at that. And I guess I got a thing for gold because you can see mask one over there on Jimbo. Yeah. And I'm going to wear this for the rest of the podcast. You do that, man. <laughs> I'm going to. Would you like Jimbo's mask? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to if you don't want to. I'll be good. Okay. I think I'm good without Jimbo's mask, but I love it, dude. It looks... <sighs> you know Actually. what? I was gonna say I love how the white is almost like pearlescent or like holographic too. Oh, yeah. Is that come off? Yeah. No way. 
<laughs> Dude, that is sick. Do I still sound okay? Oh, my headphones aren't on. You don't sound... Yeah, you sound pretty uh, good. I was like, God, why can't I hear anything? You sound a little muffled, but you oh, sound good. Hold on, you... my, my tail's on my face. <laughs> Give me a second. We're getting it on. Okay, I can... Okay, there we go. All right, guys. Can you hear us, Austin? Aust- yeah, Earth we're good. Austin. We got the mask on. We're good. All right. We Gucci, but dude, that is sick. Yeah, and the, yeah, the mouth is detachable. <laughs> dude, oh, I love all the sequins on it. Yeah, I am very glad I bought this one, and I didn't even realize the passion for gold until I bought it. I was like, oh wait, the one I bought the first year is also gold. Well, I would say that one's more yellow though. Yeah, that one is more yellow. I would say yellow just because this is like straight up gold. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm trying to get the string out of my eye. Oh, is it like smacking you right? No, it was just right in the eye. But we're good now. That's your dread, dude. We got it all fixed. Just put a little smile right there. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, and I got it. And after the match, I just felt like it would have been gone. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm buying it now. Bought it. Very happy with the purchase. And I actually, this is after Lucha. I'm pretty sure a family thought I was a lucha, a luchador, because we're going to our car, and this guy just goes, photo, photo, and I was like, yeah, sure, and so we take the photo, and I believe the mom or sister, don't know the relation, was like, rapido, 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 like they were, like, they didn't want to waste my time. Oh my and, God. I, and I was like, I'm not like a luchador. <laughs> like, I'm just wearing the mask. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they think I'm a luchador. So they're going to go home and show all their family. And this is Mystico. Do you remember Mystico? In Mystico? W- yeah. Or, I forget his name in WWE. Uh, Sin Cara? Sin Cara. This yeah. is Sin Cara. I, I, I remembered like the, the shape of it was very familiar to me. Yeah. So they might be going home and telling their family they took a picture with Mystico. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like one of the most famous wrestlers in Lucha over there. He just, you know, randomly made an appearance. Yeah, just randomly going to his car. Yeah. <laughs> so, good Dude, for them. I, funny, I didn't spoil man. it for them. <laughs> but the matches were great and actually featured some names you may know. I was about to say, read off the card. Let's hear it. So, they actually handed this to us at the beginning. That's sick. But I was like, eh. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, dick. Like, well, I'm not going to know anybody anyway. <laughs> You're such a... Dick. But I was like, I'm going to love the experience. And this match that they have right here was competing for the Grand Prix trophy. Grand Prix trophy? That's what they said. Like P-R-I-X, Grand Prix. I wonder if it's like their number one contender slot. I don't know. but You know, it, you know what I mean though, right? Yeah. Where you fight yeah, yeah, for yeah, that, like, yeah. I have the opportunity. Yeah, I don't think so because it featured a bunch of people from other companies. And it was Mexico. Versus the world, if I had to guess. Oh, so it was like a bunch of Mexican luchadors. Like just all-stars, right? I don't know. So they start announcing them, and I recognize one, and it's Mansua. He was like from 2017, maybe. He was, part of, he was part of Maximum Male Models on WWE. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That guy wrestled in WWE. I'm like, that's Mansua. And... L.A. Knight actually led that faction. His name was uh, Max Dupree. And he was like a high-end like manager for the Maximum Male Models or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, I recognize him, Mansois. And then this one. This guy right here? Yeah, that's Mansois. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one that I was like, wait a minute, I recognize him too. Claudio Castagnoli. Or you may know him as Cesaro. <laughs> yeah. No, he saw Cesaro, man. He did his thing. He did his, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, <laughs> shit. And you can, where are they on here? So I can just point them out to you. So he's there. And where's Claude? Okay, they're right above each other. Okay, so man swaz at the bottom. And right above him is Cesaro. If you look at the match card. <laughs> oh, my God. What the? Dude, he looks aged. Yeah. My boy looks a little... <laughs> so then it also says their promotions where they currently wrestle. I see a few AEWs on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can tell which ones are luchadors and which ones are coming from outside companies. Davey Boy Smith Jr. I feel like I've heard of that guy before. Yeah, there were some that said like AEW that I... I'm not huge in AEW. I don't really keep up with it. Valiente Euphoria. Oh, la madre. Yeah. Blue Pantera. And then you got Scotty and Kira. 
So that was the big match. That was the main event. And Cesaro actually won the whole thing. I was actually very shocked they did not have a Mexican wrestler win it in Mexico. That's crazy. And I was like, wow, a guy from another company won the whole thing? Cool. You know how in WWE sometimes they'll call the match like during the during the yeah. like right before, like you know who the winner is and yeah, yeah. Imagine they just go to Zart like you're gonna fuck everybody up. You're yeah. gonna win. It seems you're like what destroy happened. Destroy everybody. It was a great match. It was elimination style. So like it was all these guys in the ring at not in the ring at the same time, but it was one in the ring against each other, and then everybody else was outside. Oh so, I forgot the name of it here. Uh isn't it a lumberjack bat- match? Or a battle royale. Yeah. Or so that's how it ran. And it went on for a while, I think like an hour. And I was the like, one match? Yeah. We only had three matches, I think. Holy shit. We had the opener, we had a women's tag, and then we had that. I think that was it. And then after that, we went out, we looked at some of the things we could buy. Leslie, our friend, bought a poncho, like a authentic poncho and I got the mask, obviously, and then we went home. We got the most sleep, finally, after all that trip of feeling sick and terrible. Got to sleep in until, like, 1 p.m. That felt amazing. And then went to a Diablos playoff game. I was so stoked for that. I had already seen the Diablos once, but to see them in a playoff game, it was a different atmosphere. I was about to say, uh, right before... Yeah, I remember you were telling me, like, dude, when we go back to Mexico, it's a hit or miss because they might be on the road or because it was playoffs. The season might be over. Yeah. Or, like you just said right now, it was playoff time. Well, they were the best team by far, like 71 and 19 or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Don't they have Cano and Bauer? They have Robinson Cano. <laughs> they had Bauer, who started this game. Oh! So we saw Trevor Bauer pitch as a Diablo. <laughs> Man, he's, he's going to be pitching as an angel. I'm calling it right now. Uh, I, I don't think he's ever making it back to the MLB. Oh, we do. I think he's blackballed. Artie needs to get it off his, I guess. Artie's not doing shit. Artie's <laughs> not going to do shit, but okay, we can dream. Okay, so Cano, Bauer. Aristides Aquino. Do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't play that game. Don't know why. Wow, he's in the Diablos now? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think he left that quick. Yeah, he only had five years in the MLB. Well, not even the six-year minimum. No. I just realized that, huh? No. Wow. And then there's a few more names spread out that you may or may not remember, run depending em, run em. on your attention to MLB. Franklin Barreto. No. He was with the A's. He actually had one year with the Angels. One. Was he a pitcher? It was 2020. It was the COVID year. Oh. And uh, he was pretty bad in the MLB, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but he does pretty good in the Mexico League, so congrats, man. I would stay there. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, um, better than me, though. I can't play in any of those leagues. <laughs> and then uh, on the other team, I think this was a little before your time of getting into baseball. Just throw it. Alexia Marista. He played on the Padres. No, I remember Alexi, but I'm thinking of Alexi, I think Ramirez. Yeah, Alexi Ramirez. White Sox. Yeah. yeah. So Alexi Amarista was pretty solid, and he was there. He actually owned this game. He oh, had two homers. Wow. Yeah, both off Bauer. N- Bauer didn't do that good, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> what did he throw? I think he went six innings, five runs, something like that. Like six hits? Yeah, I don't know on the hits, but never mind. Angels uh, pitching do not. Pick it wasn't his best outing, and it was his first start of the playoffs. I think they were kind of like, "Hey, these first two rounds are going to be a breeze, so we're going to let you sit until we need you." And uh, when they needed him most, he failed. <laughs> and then after that, it went into a rain delay for about an hour. Did it was it a proper rain delay? Oh, it rained hard. It rained hard. Oh, okay. And so, Art's family was like, "Hey, we should get up now and get to the roof before everyone does." And me, and it like wasn't hard yet, but it was starting to come down. And it was just like, "Oh, like there's a drop, there's a drop." And me and Art were like, "Man, like, it's not even that bad. As long as I'm not soaked, like I don't really care. Like I'll still watch the game." And then probably like after like three minutes of like getting to the roof right before we were under the roof, it started pouring. So his 
family like timed it perfectly. Wow. And we're like, okay, you were right. <laughs> and we stayed in there for about an hour got the tarp on and everything and then you know we were like man we just hope it gets played and it did rain stopped and game went on and they just teased us and teased us because they had so many scenarios where they could have tied the game but they didn't oh it was five four the final dude that's heartbreaking yeah and we were like oh they're gonna do it and they didn't do it was it at least like people on yeah that's what i'm saying there were people on and you're like oh like Fuck. he's at third like all they <laughs> got to do is get him home didn't get him home we've they, seen that too many times here at the big a yeah alexi amarista he was just owning had the two home runs that game for the diablos a guy named marmalejos hit a big home run uh, another guy i wish i remember who it was i don't hit a game time double off the center field wall like right before Damn. the rain delay and another home run late in the game, I, w- I can't remember the guy's name, but it's like everybody in Mexico's favorite guy. Because I asked like his family, like, who's your favorite player right now on the team? Nobody said Cano. Nobody said Bauer. They're all – he's the DH of the team. I don't remember his name, but they were like him. He's like the best. And he hit a home run off the foul pole, off the foul pole where we were sitting. Oh, shit. And where we were sitting was kind of cool too because – it's not open all the time. You were sitting right like field, right? Right center-ish outfield seats. And the outfield seats are like never open. I don't think they open them during the regular season. The last time you were there, I think you showed me a picture and they were closed. Though, yeah, right? they were closed. Yeah. That was a regular season game. You think they probably do it just for like the playoff atmosphere to get yeah. more people in? Yeah. Makes sense. And so that was cool that we got to sit out there. We actually were the last row. And like EDC Mexico, or not even EDC, but a music festival was going on behind us. And they had Kesha was there, Demi Lovato. <laughs> so we could like hear their songs like in the distance as we were watching the game. And I believe it was at the first stadium of the Diablos. Not him just trying to watch some baseball. And then he hears, gonna die. dude, no, I was <laughs> waiting for like the bangers, the radio <laughs> hits. And I was like, uh, I was waiting for TikTok. No, I never heard any song I knew. And I was really? like, I was like, no, I don't know that one. <laughs> But I was just hoping to like tick tock on the clock. <laughs> and I was like, oh, tick tock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like fucking party from over here. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Just never did. Wow. And then we didn't get the win. And then the next day, I mean, thank God we didn't go to this one. They lost again. <sighs> and this one was worse. It was nine to four. Ouch. They were playing Oaxaca, by the way. The Oaxaca Guerreros. Or Oaxaca Warriors. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I guess they must be like just as good as them or better. I looked at the standings today, the final like regular season standings, and they were like the fourth seed in that division. And they were like a few games over, not like a crazy amount. And I was like, damn, they're up on them 2 0 right now. And like I said, the Diablos went like 71 and 19. Damn. Yeah. So it's currently an upset. If I had to guess, I'm sure they had the day off today because it's scheduled just like MLB. Oh, okay. Win four, you move on, series of seven, play two here, play three there, play two more at home, I think. Let me see. Let's see if the Diablos won today or if they had an off day. This series also, the playoff series, is like the CS. So the ALCS, the NLCS. To the end. Yeah. Oh. So whoever wins this moves on. I don't know what they call it now. They might still call it this, but Series del Rey, which is like the World Series. La Serie del Rey. Like the King Series, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that sounds hard. I was correct. They did have an off day today, so it works Ooh. just like the MLB. Two at Diablos. It'll be three in Oaxaca, and then two more, if needed, back in Mexico City. So hopefully they come back. Not the best start. You can see right there at the top. I was about to say 2-0. Oh. Our oh, game yeah, was no. 5-4. The next day was 9-4. Shit. So we'll see if they turn it around. And I love that atmosphere. That stadium is just amazing. It's really cool. And just in general, with Mexico, some of the things that I've noticed over three years, those roads, man, I don't know how cars survive. Yeah, cars out there are very... Uh... <laughs> they, they they get used properly. Let's say that. Dude, 
first of all, there's way more speed bumps than needed. <laughs> way more and, and they're high as shit yes, yeah. and every speed bump is <laughs> it's straight up like a fucking hilltop <laughs> high and gigantic in every car especially in our situation because we had four in one car and five in the other so the car's getting weighed down you're scraping the shit out of the bottom if of you your car a oh my we had to change a tire because of a pothole no not our car the other car oh, but uh, that. So another thing I love about Mexico, the freeways, you don't get off the freeway like an off ramp to go to services. There's services just on the side of the freeway. So you just kind of like pull over if you see like a tire station, a liquor store, anything really. It's crazy. Like, you know, here in America, you get off the off ramp. You might have to go like a block or two to find like. Oh, like, oh, the the Jiffy Lube is down the street. Yeah, off to the no, the no. Jiffy Lube would be on the side of the freeway. Uh, <laughs> that happened to us in a Tulum, not the not the blown out tire, but yeah. seeing all the mercados and just in general, like the way of life, how it is down there. Yeah, it, it's pretty sick to see how the community does come together. And it's like cool. Let's just make everything fucking accessible that's already there. Yeah, that in case somebody needs an emergency, whether yeah, you're exactly. dying of thirst or your car is about to blow. Bathrooms too are on the side of the freeway. Now I was gonna say you got charged for the bathrooms, right? Yeah, that's the one thing. You do have to pay to go to the bathroom. Is it about 10 pesos? The one price I remember for one of them is seven. It was seven pesos. Okay. I think I might retire and go to Mexico, bro. Hey, I don't blame you, Our bro. money would go so much longer in Mexico. <sighs> we have no idea. So much longer. It would, dude. I survived in Mexico. My first time going. First time going to Vallarta, I went with my cousins. We were there a week. I think the Airbnb was probably about 125 a person group of eight of us dog i got away with like 220 for the whole week and that's still like picking out getting this do you want that Dude, okay i'll grab unbelievable this. how it's beautiful bro. cheap everything is everybody go visit mexico go visit mexico now yeah. so we can build up better roads trust me back where my mom is from yeah. those roads suck. Are, are they dirt roads bro. or are they like paved it, out asphalt paved out asphalt but it's like mixed in Being with the, old cobblestone oh and like old stone yeah like real shit yeah. like that yeah. Like, granted, it's very Ciudad Juarez. Like, there's very population. There's a bunch of buildings and shit. But it's just like, you know, they're still kind of going through it. Not necessarily as hard as other people are. But, yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to make the most no, of yeah. what they can. No, dude, those roads, man. I mean, the cars. That's just every speed bump we went over. Like, a majority. Why do you think everybody there drives like a crossover and, SUV type of thing? And what really would typically a be a five-minute drive to get out of the Puebla, the neighborhood? turns into a 20 minute because every speed mob you have to go over you have to go like <laughs> and i'm like so it's safe to say my civic probably oh, wouldn't make civic it would out. be screwed bro <laughs> <laughs> and then what also dude this was the worst one of the whole trip art's cousin we're going to the hot air balloons and he had to make a u-turn and to go into the entrance of the hot air balloons he yeah. went too early so he went off the curb and just goes <laughs> And oh. then the worst one I've heard in all the years of being in their car, dude, straight up just <laughs> like scraping the bottom of his car. I'm like, I feel so bad. Uh, and dude, every I would not time, want to be in the car. Oh, uh, it's just, oh my God. Oh, I feel sorry. Like, I really hate when it happens. I'm like, dude, oh, my goodness. Well, bless them, dog. The dogs, that's another thing that just breaks my heart. There's just dogs everywhere. He just showed me a picture of a dog. I'm like, damn, what kind of dog is that? And he's like, El Mutt. <laughs> and they're the nicest dogs, dude. They are. They're all... aggressive. They all just want love. And they if... all just want love or at least a little bit of food and water. If you just give them a little love, man, they follow you everywhere. And it doesn't stop. They don't want to leave you. And, oh, it's just heartbreaking because there's so many. I think if I'm right, that happened to Steve, but in Brazil. Steve, oh, really? Steve saved a dog. Oh, Steve from Jagger. Yeah, I've heard that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he saved a dog from the street because, like, same thing. He kind of just kept feeding it, and then he tried sneaking into the hotel room. The guy in the hotel was like bugging. They ended up leaving the hotel completely. Went to another Cause spot. Of that? Yeah, because of that. Because they were like, "We're not. You're not letting the dog in." Like, all right, cool. I'm not gonna stay here. All right. And he left, saved the dog completely, came back to yeah. the states. I've, I've heard the story. Yeah. But yeah, that I wish I could take all of them home. But unfortunately, no. 
<laughs> It'd be like that, guys. We ended our whole trip with a great night in Tepotzlan. Our friends own a restaurant over there. Just great night of drinking, dancing, having fun. Was that your Ryan Reynolds uh, reenactment <laughs> yes, and sir. arts uh, pole dancing? Yes, sir. I literally <laughs> said, because, you know, it's Spanish music the whole night, and I fuck with that. There, I have a few songs on my phone. But I was like, dude, with the vibe I'm feeling, I really am feeling the Bye 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 dance right now with Deadpool and Wolverine coming out. I got to reenact this shit. I had a stage. I had a loudspeaker. I was like, yeah, cancion, 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 song in English. And so I asked our friend who had the phone, and I put it in. I was like, Art, get this shit. Fucking hit that shit. Then they put on that sexy song, <laughs> and you can see Art spinning around the stage. I love how he just turns on it so slow at first, and then he just drops. Dude, <laughs> I wanted to do it, but I was like, I am heavy. I am not going to be the one that brings this thing down. You would have been fine. It was it was not locked in, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so I was like, let me not throw my 250-pound ass around this thing. <laughs> I didn't want to be the one paying the bill. <laughs> yeah. Great time in Mexico, as always. Oh, guys, and go. Don't be afraid. No actually, I actually had somebody. Hold on. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> I was about to say, my boy is I'm cooking gonna br- under that. I, I'm actually not. But, you know, just you get better air intake. Well, you don't <laughs> want to sweaty the mask up, too, I'm guessing. Eh, not a lot. No. Really not much at all. No. But I actually had somebody comment on what is that i don't know what that is <laughs> i don't know what he put in his mouth guys neither do i <laughs> that's a bad thing uh was it this post i believe somebody commented yeah here we go hey austin i just wanted to say have fun over there p.s my family and friends want to send you our prayers thank you over there in mexico city because i know there's a lot of crime and dangers over there and hope you be safe and i know that's the propaganda and what the world sees but if you're there with the right people and you know what to do, where to go, it's fine. I literally never feel a danger when I'm there. It's a blast, guys. It is. Even if you're afraid, even if you're just confused, because obviously the big thing is it's a completely different language, especially if you're not used to it. Well, I think, like I said, the propaganda, I think Mexico gets that rep. I think every country, obviously, you're not going to feel safe because it's foreign and you don't know and you don't know where anything is. Some countries, you don't speak the language, but I think Mexico gets a bad rap in general compared to other countries. And like I said, as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you're in the right place and with the right people, that's what I would recommend. If you know somebody that can guide you, then you will feel fine. You will never feel in danger. And just like an example of like how things are better there than here here if somebody's trying to sell you something on the street right say like a cd or just hey man grab this if you tell them no they get angry here yeah they're like oh what the hell why would you buy it like screw you fuck fuck you dude there you tell them like oh no i'm all right and they're like okay gracias have a good day and they leave you alone like they don't get all like hung up and angry like, I've noticed the the angry and like hung upness a lot more from the beach vendors. Yes, <laughs> around like <laughs> our area because even in Mexico when I was at the resort and we were just out and about, they were just very, "Hey, how's it going? Would you guys like to buy anything?" No, okay, thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, just on to the next. Yeah, that's really how it is. It's not hard. Yeah. You don't have to be in someone's face like, "Hey, yo, do you want to buy?" That? No, you don't want to. And this. if you don't know anybody that knows the area or knows Mexico, dude, hire uh, a tour. I, like, there's plenty of people even on doing any research on any website you want legit hire a tour uh tour guide and have them yeah you you. could do that or if you don't have somebody that knows the area i was just gonna say somebody that just speaks spanish in general just uh, that would be the easiest way if you have a friend that speaks spanish i think you'd feel better if you went with them just so at least you have somebody that speaks the language so you're not completely lost and yeah i mean it just gets a bad rap and it's not as bad as everyone thinks my parents were the same way over the first year i went like just be careful 
Over the years, though, they've completely. My mom wants to go now. <laughs> Is your dad still a little weary? Oh yeah, my dad's like, <laughs> my dad's like, I don't get why you keep going back. Like, just be safe. Blah blah blah. You know why? It's because the Gators, dude. The Gators scared him a lot, so he's like, in Mexico. The Gators, Mexican Is, Gators. Are there Gators in Mexico? I don't, probably, like down super super south. I don't know. There could be. <laughs> I've never heard of Gators in Mexico. But thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this episode of Off the Field Podcast. If you made it to the end of this one, remember to tune in on Spotify and Apple 7 a.m. to have us inside of you, in your ears, loud and proud. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, if you want to see us visually. and have us in your ears visually, audio 7 a.m. YouTube. Fridays. Fridays. And thank you so much. We will see you in episode number 83.